Hey, young black man, God wants you to be free, part three. And I am picking up at Isaiah chapter 61, reading all 11 verses in the Message Bible. Um, Hold on one second. Let me write part three right here. So I don't know. Okay, let's go. The spirit of <clears throat> the spirit of God, the God, the spirit of God, the master is on me because God anointed me. He sent me to preach good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, announce freedom to all captives, pardon all prisoners. God sent me to announce the year of his grace, a celebration of God's destruction of our enemies and to comfort all who mourn to care for the needs of all who mourn in Zion, give them bouquets of roses instead of ashes, messages of joy instead of news of doom, a praising heart instead of a languid spirit. Rename them oaks of righteousness planted by God to display his glory. They'll re rebuild old ruins, raise a new city out of the wreckage. They'll start over on the ruined cities. Take the rubble left behind and make it new. You'll hire outsiders to herd your flocks and foreigners to work your fields, but you'll have the title priests of God, honored as ministers of God. You'll feast on the bounty of nations. You'll bask in their glory because you got a double dose of trouble and more than your share of contempt. Your inheritance in the land will be doubled and your joy go on forever. Because I, God, love fair dealing, love fair dealing and hate that hate thievery and crime. I'll pay your wages on time and in full and establish my eternal covenant with you. Your descendants will become well known all over. Your children in foreign countries will be recognized as once as the people I have blessed. I will sing for joy in God, explode in praise from deep in my soul. It dressed me up in a suit of salvation. I'm sorry. He dressed me up in a suit of salvation. He outfitted me in a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom who puts puts on. Oh, I can't read my own handwriting. Sorry. As a bridegroom who puts on a tuxedo and a bride a jeweled tiara for as the earth bursts with spring wildflowers and as a garden cascade with blossoms so the master god brings righteousness into full bloom and puts praise on display before the nations so I just wanted to read that. Well, again, that was the Message Bible. And part two ended with reading Isaiah 61, chapter 61 in the New King James Version, in case if you haven't seen that. But uh, I just wanted to, for some reason, God just had me to read the whole ver the whole chapter of Isaiah 61 because I was just going to read um, Isaiah um, 61 verses 1 through 3, but God told me to read the whole thing so it's a message in it for somebody it could be me it could be you it could be somebody you know that you can tell this um scripture or read this scripture to all right so um <clears throat> as i mentioned in i think it was like part one i was saying that i wrote this up like seven seventeen september and so i right here i write earlier this week i woke up so let's like the the week some days before 17 september i woke up and ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 was in my spirit now i know i have been dealing with anger for a long time and i will often say this verse when anger arose so this week i was more intentional of saying this verse you know i would say god remove this heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh now ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 in the new king james reads I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Now, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 in the Message Bible reads, I'll give you a new heart, put a new spirit in you. 
I'll remove the heart, the stone, I'll remove the stone heart from your body and replace it with a heart that's God willed, not self willed. Now, um, I guess I started, um, I guess I started this on the 17th, but I stopped and came back on the 21st. Um, so hold on, let me pause this one quick second because my husband's about to walk in. So, so last night I had a dream. At the end of the dream, I was lying on my back. My heart jumped. It jumped so hard that it woke me up. Soon as I woke up, I heard, quote unquote, anger. God let me know the spirit of anger left my body. Before I had went to sleep, I cried and cried and cried to God about anger and a couple of thing, other things. This was about 2.30 in the morning. You know, I cried out in my brokenness and my sins and God heard me. So, I am reading the Bible in the message version, you know, in my own time. That's what I'm doing there. God told me to read the Bible in the message Bible. So, that's what I'm doing because I've been asking him for a better understanding of his words so he said read the message bible and that's what i bought a message bible here it is right here this right here so sorry i'm getting off track but I'm, i started from genesis and i read genesis exodus part of leviticus but um god stopped me and then i went to lamentations he had me read lamentations i read esther and now, right now, he got me in the book of Matthew. I mean, no, the book of Mark. And once I finish that, I'll go back to uh, Leviticus, where I stopped off at. But, you know, in the midst, he'll tell me to read something else. But, anywho, God knows what he does, why he do. Knows why he does what he does. So, I just try my best to be obedient. And when I don't be obedient, I ask him for forgiveness. So, anywho, back to this. Okay. So... Before this, I was reading, uh, I was, at this time, I was in Exodus chapter 33 and 34, uh, you know, before I was crying out to God. Now, while writing this testimony out, God reminded me of something I wrote and highlighted in Exodus 33. I wrote, quote, God, please never not want to be with me. I repent, I repent, I repent. And I highlighted Exodus chapter 33, verses 30. Verses 3 through 6 in the Message Bible. And I just want to read them to you real quick. It says, But I won't be with you in person. You're such a stubborn, hard-headed people, lest I destroy you on the journey. When the people heard this harsh verdict, they were plunged into gloom and wore long faces. No one put on jewelry. God said to Moses, tell the Israelites, you're one hard-headed people. I couldn't stand being with you for even a moment. I destroyed you. So take off your jewelry until I figure out what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped themselves of their jewelry from uh, Mount Horeb on. So, as I was writing this scripture out, I heard, what is God asking you to take all off? Take off of, what is he asking you to take off? Is it pride? Is it fear? Is it smoking weed? Is it drinking? Is it gluttony? Is it a brand of clothes, jewelry, accessories, perfume to stop using? Uh, is it a TV show, a movie, social media, video games? Is it anger? Is it disobedience to parents, teachers, bosses, adults, leaders, government officials, etc., whomever? So, ask God if he is asking you to remove anything. Ask God what it is. Be obedient. Remove it. If for some reason it is hard to remove, for example, pride, uh, a TV show, etc., cry out to God for help. Look up scriptures on pride or whatever it is that you're needing help with. Um repent to god let god know that you do not ever want to not you let god know that you do not ever want him to not to want to be with you cry out to god with a sincere contrite heart and contrite means feeling or showing sorrow and remorse for something 
It means filled with a sense of guilt and the desire for atonement. And atonement is making...